All right, hey guys, welcome back for another video. It's Gene again, and I've got a question to answer today from Frank that I thought was a good one about the AHAR system and the PC12 legacy, and specifically what these switches down here do, <clears throat> right here. So I figured I would jump into X-Plane here. This is X-Plane 11, the Carnado PC12 with Reality Expansion Pack, and just kind of do a quick walkthrough and show you guys what those switches are all about. So let's get some power turned on to the airplane. That's one and two on. <clears throat> and we've got 24.2 volts. Somebody actually told me in the comments, which I very much appreciate that if you turn on the external power switch, it'll pretend, there you go, that a GPU is hooked up to the airplane. Awesome. So now we got 28 volts. Turn on the standby bus, flip the inverter over, turn on our avionics now. Lights are set, separators open. Good enough for our demonstration today. All right. So I'll leave that yoke hidden. <clears throat> All right, so first I just wanted to describe the instruments a little bit in the PC-12, and this is common to really pretty much any airplane out there. And the legacy PC-12 um, actually has kind of the primary six-pack flight instruments here that you'll see on a lot of older airplanes in this particular configuration. It's actually a little bit different, but we've got the... Uh, EADI right here, which is the attitude indicator that stands for attitude direction indicator. The E is electronic because it's an EFIS. And there's actually a switch down here that says EFIS, and that stands for electronic flight information system or flight instrument system. And that just means that we've got some glass in the cockpit. We don't have all steam or round dial gauges. We've got some electronic display of the instruments here. <clears throat> and um, instead of the old fashioned just gyro instruments, which we'll get to in a second. But anyway, that's your attitude indicator or E. Uh, EADI, this is your altimeter, vertical speed indicator or VSI, this is your EHSI, that stands for horizontal situation indicator, and again the E is for electronic. This down here is an RMI, and this normally in most smaller GA airplanes with uh, steam gauges or the round dial gauges is the turn coordinator. This is the position for the turn coordinator. But since we do have an EFIS on the PC-12, the turn coordinator functionality is incorporated into the EADI, and I'll show you that in just a second. So they had a, a spot on the panel here to stick an RMI. RMI stands for Radio Magnetic Indicator, and this is basically a fancy ADF that'll just point at an, AD, uh, an NDB on the ground like an ADF would, or a VOR, whatever you have set into your navigation radios. Doesn't really get used a whole lot anymore with GPS, but it's there if you need it. I've used it occasionally for final approach fixes, like if you have an outer marker or you have uh, you know, just different things around on an approach that you want that to point at, or a VOR in the terminal area. You can set that in there, and it's kind of helpful for situational awareness or your positional awareness. But anyway, and then up here is your airspeed indicator. So um, older airplanes, and there are still plenty of these flying around, have uh, gyroscopic instruments. And your attitude indicator, your heading indicator, and the turn coordinator <coughs> are all gyroscopic instruments that use actual mechanical gyros in the older airplanes to function. So in the PC-12, we actually have, they don't really have it, displayed right now but anyway the the ball right here this is the inclinometer it's like a carpenter's level that's just a little ball suspended in fluid and that'll shift around left or right as you bank the airplane in flight and if you're in a slip or a skid that ball will not be in the middle like it is right now so you always want to keep that ball in the middle to stay coordinated in a turn so that's the inclinometer the rate of turn indicator actually comes out of this little upside down triangle up here at the top of the bank scale on the attitude indicator as you're banking and that will show you your rate of turn. And rate of turn means how fast your heading is changing. It doesn't necessarily correlate directly to the bank angle. Um, so standard rate turn is three degrees per second, half standard rate's a degree and a half per second, and that'll show up up there. So that's why we don't have the old style turn coordinator with the little miniature airplane down there because it's incorporated into here. Um, anyway, so if you don't know what a gyroscope is, uh, the old mechanical gyros would just spin up either from vacuum, so you would have air uh, blowing onto the gyroscope and just spinning it up really fast, or you would have a little electrical motor that was spinning the gyro up. And when a gyroscope spins up, it'll become rigid in space, which means that it stays in a fixed position as the airplane pitches and rolls around it. It'll just stay fixed. So you've got gimbal rings on the gyro, and those gimbal rings will move around the rigid gyro, and then it, the, the gyro can basically sense you know, changes in heading and pitch and, and roll and all that stuff and display those on the instruments. Um, so 
in the glass panel airplanes, we, we kind of moved away from that technology because it can fail, right? So if you lose your vacuum pump and you don't have air pressure, you don't have anything flowing over the gyro to keep it spinning, the gyro spins down and it just loses its rigidity in space, doesn't do its job anymore. Or the gyroscope itself can fail because you got a lot of moving parts in there. So gyro failures are no bueno in instrument meteorological conditions when you can't see out the window because you can lose control of the airplane because you don't have a great you know, sense of its orientation anymore unless you've got those gyros working. So um, these days anymore, we have AHAR systems that moved in and replaced the gyroscopic instruments. And so these switches down here say AHARs 1 and 2. AHAR stands for Attitude and Heading Reference System. And the AHARs, again, takes the place of the gyros. So the AHARs uses accelerometers and magnetic sensing to determine the orientation of the airplane. So accelerometers can sense acceleration, deceleration, and loading, which are G-forces. And so it can tell you, you know, just based on little tiny um, senses, you know, if, if, as you're moving the airplane around, as you're banking and rolling and accelerating and decelerating, the AHARs can sense that, and it can tell if your heading's changing or if your bank angle's changing or if your pitch attitude, all that stuff is changing. Your rate of turn, and it's going to display that on these instruments. Um, so it doesn't actually have a spinning gyroscope, it's just using those accelerometers to determine that. So down here, for AHARS-1, uh, that drives the pilot side, ADI and HSI, and AHARS-2 drives the co-pilot, ADI and HSI. And each one of them can be put into what's known as free gyro mode. So the DG down here on this switch stands for directional gyro. And that's kind of the old fashioned name for just a standard gyro. So it's called the DG directional gyro, which is the heading indicator. So it can tell you which direction you're pointed. So if it's in slave, <coughs> AHARS is normally in slave like it is right now. Uh, that means that the EHSI is gonna be looking at the AHARS and the magnetic sensing in the AHARS to determine what your heading is. So it's automatically slaved to that. So you don't have to set the HSI to anything because it auto automatically knows what the heading is. If I put this into DG mode, it goes into free gyro mode, which means it's the heading indicator on the HSI is no longer slaved to anything that knows what the heading is. So at that point, I can use this switch, which says uh, CW or CCW, that stands for clockwise or counterclockwise. To, and if I press and hold that, uh, switch to either clockwise or counterclockwise, it's going to twist this compass card clockwise or counterclockwise, and I can set it to whatever heading I want based on what my magnetic compass up here says. So this is known as the whiskey compass or the magnetic compass because it's just a compass that's floating around in some kerosene. And back in the older airplanes, before you had any slaving or an AHARS or any of that fancy stuff, what you had to do was set your DG to match your magnetic compass on the ground before you took off and then reset it every 15 minutes in flight as it would precess because when you put friction on gimbals, over time the gyro will actually precess and lose some of its accuracy. So you'd have to keep resetting it, reset this to the magnetic compass during flight. Well, with slaving, you don't have to do any of that. You never touch it. But if you put it into DG mode, which is free gyro mode, you're going to have to reset that to the magnetic compass heading. So that would only be something you would need to do if you had a failure of the AHARs or some sort of malfunction in the AHARs to where the heading indicator on the HSI was not tracking your heading properly. I've never had to do it. I've never heard of anyone having to use this. It's incredibly rare, but it is there if you need it and you can do it for either AHARs one or two. So uh, there is a switch. I don't see it modeled in the SIM here. It's usually right here. Uh, on most legacies where you can switch from AHARS 1 to AHARS 2. So AHARS 2 can actually feed the pilot side if you have a failure of AHARS 1 and vice versa, just for some system redundancy. And that has happened. I've heard of that happening. Um, but for some reason, they didn't, they didn't stick it in the sim here. Uh, EFIS down here, incidentally, since we're talking about these switches, again, that stands for Electronic Flight Instrument System has two modes, normal and composite. So if you put this into composite, it's not modeled in the sim here. I see nothing changed. Uh, it'll actually place all the information on the attitude indicator down here on the, H, on the EHSI, and it'll squeeze them both actually onto that same CRT display. And it'll do the same thing up top. It'll bring the HSI up to the ADI. So you'll basically have both of these CRT screens 
showing both attitude and horizontal situation information. So you would use that if you lost one of the CRTs. So if one of these screens went belly up, you could put this into composite mode and you wouldn't lose any information. It just squeezes it all into one screen. So that's normally a norm. And um, of course you can do the same thing over here on the Copilot side. There's a switch over there for that as well. So anyway, I hope that clears it up, Frank. Thanks for the question. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about that or anything else, guys. And if you're enjoying the videos, please don't uh, forget to subscribe and like the video. That helps me out a lot. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.